Hello and welcome to War Tales. This is currently being released out of Steam Early Access and if you'd like to check out the game there is a link in the description. This video is kindly sponsored by Shiro Games and you can play this co-op. Yes you can. This is an open world RPG where you take control of a bunch of well your very own characters of your very own making and we're going to actually start a new game here just so that you can actually have a look at the character creation. I already have a save that I'd like to load up after this and then hopefully we're going to be able to see exactly what's going on here so you can see here we can now choose between all of these different options and that's going to provide you with a number of different starting companions and you can recruit other companions as you go forward in the game and you can recruit from you know prisoners and mercenaries and all kinds of other walks of life and so you can see here, it also allows you to start with a variety of different resources too. So just for the sake of it, I'm just going to pick some random option here. Young farmers looking for a better life. And then we can also choose something else here that is going to give us some kind of bonus. So for example, let's say that we want to gain increased experience in combat. That sounds great, right? Cunning fighters. However, then you must pick a floor for your troops and you can see here that we have incredibly limited knowledge and internal dissatisfaction so it reduces the troops happiness during each rest mm, i don't i don't, i'm not not a big fan of that i like a, i like a lot of happiness please thank you very much and otherwise yeah we're just going to take that and then now this is where the game gets even better because the people at shiro games they obviously knew you know what we don't want to do just one thing here with the level scaling because we know that players are at least for me specifically, I know that a lot of people are not really that happy with, you know, um, adaptive levels. So, for example, uh, enemies will always scale with your level. Some people aren't happy with that. Some people don't like it, but some people do. So what they've done is they've included two different options here. In other words, if you play on adaptive, obviously that's level scaling. So in other words, if you're level 10, then most enemies will be around that level. And region locked exploration is very different. So for example, let's say you go into another region and you're level 5 and enemies are going to be level 15. So they won't be scaled to you. Apart from that, you have a wide variety of other difficulties that you can select too in regards to the combat difficulty as well as the survival difficulty, which basically uh, changes... Um, you know, how much hunger, fatigue, wages, etc. that you're going to have to deal with. And then you also have the saving mode as well. So massive amounts of customization available here. I'm just going to select some random things here just so that we can continue onward to the actual actual characters themselves. And you can even customize your little horse in the background there. So if I just select Grimlin here, you can obviously change his name. We can, we can call him Bonk. If we want to, you know, we, you could just call him whatever you want to call him. And obviously his class is determined by your very first choice in the character creation. So there's also that. Otherwise, you can change how they look from their gender, from their face, skin tone, hair, hair color, facial hair, clothing colors, and so on and so forth. But now you can customize them even further. So, for example, you have traits here. So let's say that you want to make someone that's really quick in combat. Boom. He's really quick in combat. But let's also say that you want him to be, uh, I don't know, you want him to have an increased critical chance. So there you go. You've got an increased critical chance. But now here's the thing. If you, cho if you choose two positive traits, you are also going to have to pick a negative trait. So let's say, um, let's say you took that, uh, that previous bonus that we had earlier in the character creation where you gain 10% more experience. Well, him being stupid, as you can see right here, gains him 5% less experience. But with that trait that we had earlier, we actually gain an overall of 5. So if, you, if you're wanting to be a little bit min-maxi, I suppose, if you want to, you know, <laughs> look at it from that angle, then you could take stupid and you could then have two positive traits and one negative trait, but the negative trait is nullified by that previous thing that you chose. Otherwise, they're also going to start with a wide variety of different equipment. You can see here that we have the brute starts with a, um, a club and a shield. Obviously, it's more of a sword fighter, you know, tanky kind of character. And then you obviously have two spearmen if you picked the same character uh, creation that I did and then you obviously have an archer there and you can even change the pony's appearance as well as you can see right there very very cool to see that and it even does damage you can even choose traits for the horse too so 
if you want it to go into combat, then you can, of course, do that. Otherwise, I'm going to be loading up my save in just a second, and we'll begin our adventure. All right, so we are now going to be entering a battle against these bandits. And as you can see, I have named my people some rather amusing things. Anyway, we're going to head in, in here and we're going to see exactly how we do in our first combat encounter. For me personally, I absolutely love the combat in War Tales. I feel like it is very dynamic. It actually provides you with a lot of risk reward style gameplay as well. Because, for example, let's say with the archer here, you can get friendly fire. Yeah, that's usually not something that is very prevalent in kind of turn-based strategy as far as I can tell, because usually what would happen is if there's a unit standing in front of your archer or in front of your gunner or firearms user or something like that, you're not usually going to have a kind of collision with that. You can just fire through them or whatever the case may be. But this, no, 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 they're going to they're gonna shoot them. <laughs> they're going to shoot them, so we've got to be a little bit careful. Anyway, we've got 100% chance to hit this hoodlum from here, so I'm pretty happy just to go with that. Let's do it. Glory's going to shoot him, and then we can end the turn there. There we go. All right, so I remember very specifically from playing beforehand that spearmen do more damage the further away or at the uh, sort of like the apex of their reach. So getting as... Uh, getting within that reach or within that range that you can attack is the most efficient way of attacking. And the thing is, they're not actually going to be engaged. So technically what I should have done is I should have attacked with Wonky because engage or engagement is very much an important tool to provide flanking bonuses to your other characters. So that's actually something I'm going to show you in just a second when we get control of Wonky. So here we go. Gonna move straight up there, gonna bonk him on the head, and this is going to put him into engagement. Yeah, as you can see right here, when you perform a melee attack on a free enemy, you engage them. An engaged unit can only attack their engaged opponent and has a higher chance of taking critical damage. Take advantage of this with your other units. In other words, Marvin over here, he can then, well, once we've ended the turn, obviously, he can then go over here and we can probably do a little bit of a flanking action. We might be able to do a bit of a flanking action here. So I'm going to try that out. Yes, we can. And Luke, look at that. There we go. That is indeed a wonderful death. Uh, well, <laughs> not for that guy. Not for that guy, of course, no. Okay, so here we go. We got a damaged dagger, which actually inflicts poison, apparently. Or it has... Uh, yeah, look at that. It actually deals damage and applies one poison. That is a very... I got to say, that feels like a really strong... Um, Really strong weapon. And you can, of course, loot human remains. And bear in mind, you can be a cannibal in this game. You can actually take the cannibalism skill if you so desire. But from what I can tell, it is not that impactful. It does provide you with a little bit of, um, little bit of food. But you would expect a, a full human body to give you much more than just one food. But I suppose in a pinch, it could potentially be quite useful. Anyway, we've actually leveled up. Glory has leveled up right here. So you can now choose one of these skills. And we're probably going to go for something like uh, Valorous, Valorous Victory, probably something like that. Every time this unit kills an enemy, you gain one yellow Valor Point. So bear in mind that Valor Points in this game are special resources that you can utilize now, yellow Valor Points are only gained and used in combat. They do not carry over from combat encounter to combat encounter. So when you gain one, or when Glory gains one, as you can see right here, after he kills an enemy, then he can use that yellow Valor Point to power one of his other skills. And obviously, I don't think we have any of those skills at the moment, but hopefully sometime a little bit later, we will be able to gain one. Um, but then if you take a look at the top right of the screen here, you can see these orange Valor Points. Now, these Valor Points do carry over. And you can see here, use your Valor Points in combat to use certain skills. You'll regain some of these each time you rest. So very much a case of, well, you can use these but they are finite and they do power some very strong abilities. We're going to be specking into critical hit here so that we can get some more, uh, hopefully some more kills. And we're just going to continue onward. Here we go. All right. So there's a wide variety of different resources that you can pick up on the world map as well. As you can see right there, we're going to be picking up some of these. 
And let me tell you, the world map is very large, and they they have just they've actually just added a late game zone, a completely new zone. I have not been there myself, but I am very much interested in venturing to it. That is for sure. Now we have the stables here that we've uh, now just uncovered. I think I'm actually just going to go in this direction. I'm just going to pick some random direction to go off in because that's the funny thing about this game. Random things will just happen to you. And you'll literally think to yourself, okay, what what just happened? I need to decide on what I need to do in this situation. And it's going to be pretty harsh. Also, there is fishing in the game. I don't have a fishing hook at the moment, so I won't be able to participate in fishing. But that's definitely something that I would look forward to later down the line because I am, you know, in these kinds of games, I absolutely love doing those, uh, you know, alternate activities and now here is a small town that we can visit so there's a forge here a town hall the marketplace a clinic and the inn and where else to get some information or some jobs than by going into the inn let's see who has some uh, who has some interesting tidbits of information for us right here oh it seems like the informant might actually help us out with that Psst, you yeah you you're looking for work I can give you tips and point you toward the best missions, the kind that pays much better than the measly rewards the mercenary guild has to offer. Of course, you'll then have to meet the client and meddle in other people's affairs, but at the end of the day, it's the number of crowns in your purse that counts, right? Okay, so that's what's really cool about this game too. They actually do allow you, not sure if this is even possible against the informant, but I'm going to assume that it is if you have the appropriate skills. You can steal stuff from people. And and I think, from what I can tell, I've not actually done this myself because I've never really gone down the stealing route before, but from what I can tell, you can do it to any NPC in the whole game, which is actually pretty crazy. Anyway, as you can see right here, there's a bunch of information, but unfortunately, I'm going to need influence to be able to buy them. So this really spurs me on to get some influence. So I'm actually just going to leave right now. Uh, who, who is who is this? Emissary Florard? Might you be looking for work? Our role as emissaries is to ensure that all service requests are fulfilled. We regularly update our job offers. Okay, well, let's, let's review. Aha! Here we go. Okay, so wait a minute. So we got a bunch of bounties right here. So we can vanquish Silade's squad. The recent increase in caravan raids is attributed to Silade's squad. A bounty is offered to anyone who will put an end to this nuisance. All right, well, the reward is only 200 gold, but it is difficulty easy. And I say only because here's the thing. This average difficulty quest is only 20 more gold. So I'm actually thinking to myself, hmm, it would probably be a good idea for me to just take this one. And what's really cool is they give you a preview of where you have to go on the little mini-map down in the bottom right here. So when you actually get outside, you know exactly which direction you need to head in. So I like that a, a whole bunch. Okay, so it also tells you on the, on the actual screen here which way you're going to have to go to be able to complete these tasks. So, for example, let's say that I want to help these desperate refugees. Bandits have been attacking caravans and travelers along the roads. This must end now, or merchants will refuse to travel through Tiltron which is the region in which we are in at the moment. Okay, so this is east, so I think I'm probably going to be accepting this as well, because they're right next to each other, as you can see right here. And that is a wonderful mechanic, a wonderful quality of life improvement. Because, let's face it, isn't it the worst thing ever when you play an RPG and you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to take these quests, and you can only, you can only take a limited amount of them sometimes, and then you find that they are at opposite ends of the map. And you can't do anything about it, so you have to travel between them. And yeah, so obviously that avoids that whole that whole rigmarole, which is actually really nice. Anyway, let's move on and see whether we can go in the direction that I need to go in. So let me see here. Let me just make sure that I'm going in the right direction. I think this is the right direction. Yes, it is. All right, let's make our way over to the quest objectives, and we'll see exactly whether we can vanquish Silade's squad. Ah, now there is a guard outpost and a sinister cave. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. We probably want to go into that sinister cave. Okay, first of all, let's take care of our official business first because I'm going to assume that after I vanquish this particular band of, of ruffians or whatever they are, I'm uh, maybe going to need to restore myself a little bit. So 
we probably want to just go ahead and do that. Oh, hello there. I see them. Did you see them? They were right there. Hello there. Yes, Soleil the Coward. It's a corporal. All right, let's do this. I actually wonder if it's just one person. If it's just one person, this is going to be extremely simple. Maybe I should have taken the average um, average difficulty quest. That might have made more sense. Ooh, there is a bear trap here as well. Okay, wait a minute. Can I actually make use of this? Probably not, right? I mean, the enemy might make their way over here, to be honest. They might do that. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Glory needs to... Can I, can I actually move them over here? Mm. You can place a companion here before it starts. Yeah, we can just click and drag them, as you can see right there. So that's obviously a lot easier. Let's actually do that. Let's do a li let's play around the bear trap if we can. I don't think that's going to work, but we'll try it out nevertheless. Okay, so let's see. I can't actually fire at her just yet. Okay, so we're going to have to move a little bit closer, which I'm not a big fan of. 100% chance. Okay, we're doing very little damage. I was hopeful for a critical hit there, but of course that's not always going to be the case. Okay, so yeah, we'll just end the turn here. Uh, yeah, this uh, this fellow also has first aid, by the way, so it could be kind of useful for us. We're actually going to move the archer back a little bit, just because don't really want to get him murdered almost immediately. We're just going to end Wonky's turn here, and we are... Hmm... I think we're probably just going to end everyone else's turn because I'm, I'm kind of wanting them to move first. Let's see what happens. Yeah, they can't move into range, as you can see. Yeah, that was actually a perfect thing for us to go for right there. Very, very nicely done. Okay, so now what we can do is we can literally move over here. And we're going to just do something like this. Can we move here without getting... Oh, did I really step on it? Of course I did. Of course I did. What a classic. Isn't that a classic and a half? Yes, it is. Okay, let's just go into battle then. Let's just engage the opponent. Ugh. What a... Ugh. That's just so terrible, isn't it? That is just so terrible. Okay, well, that's my bad. That is my bad. Okay, yeah, so this is actually one of the abilities that I was talking about earlier that uses Valor Points. So you can see here... This forces the target to engage and inflicts weakening to them, and weakening reduces the, the, the damage that they deal by 50%, which is actually pretty significant. So, yeah, that's that's very cool to do, but obviously I'm not going to use that just yet, and we're just going to do a little bit of something here. We're going to try to move up and do some damage with our little spear here. There we go. That should be pretty decent. Nice. Five damage. Mm, obviously the armor is really preventing us from doing too much here, but should be fine. There we go. Another little bit of damage right there. We are pushing Sulaid a little bit here, which I'm not that big a fan. Oh, no, no, they are still engaging. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Our archer needs to reposition, or bread needs to reposition, let's say. So let's actually move him over here. And we're just going to continue attacking from here. There we go. That seems pretty decent. Here we are. And then we can... Do a little bit of damage here. Nice. Okay. The armor is all gone, at least. I mean, that's the one thing that we really want to make sure of, right? At least I think so. And now let's shoot. 81%. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can Wonky actually move right now? Yeah, Wonky can move because we're not engaged right now with them. Okay, so let's do this. It seems like we weren't engaged before, so that might have actually made sense for me to... Um, change that up a little bit but maybe we can get a critical oh we got a critical oh that was fantastic okay that actually worked i wow okay that was really really nice and look at this look at what we just got here instead of doing his army proud the corporal took this uh oh well actually the corporal took this rondel belonged to, to to the deserters and took the shield with him all right well Whatever the case, this is an amazing shield, and we are hopefully going to be able to utilize it. We can repair if we want to. I'm not sure if we... Do, do I want to? We've got 25 raw materials to repair with. Why not? Let's do it. Bread has also advanced in level. I don't even know what kind of bread. Is it rye bread? Is it wholemeal? Is it white? I don't know. It's any of those. It's probably sourdough. Let's, let's face it. It's probably sourdough. All right. Yeah, so otherwise... Every time this unit ends their turn next to an ally and is not engaged in combat, you gain one. Now, here's the thing. Not sure how... 
Mm, I mean, that's going to affect my playstyle quite significantly. Because obviously, if you go into a battle and you make sure that your units are next to each other, you're probably going to have a pretty decent time if you take this. Otherwise, we've got Valorous Audacity here. Every time this unit ends their turn next to an enemy and is not engaged in combat, you gain this. Now, most of the time, spearmen are not going to be engaged because they are going to keep the enemy at their, uh, you know, spear's length, whatever the, whatever the length is. So I'm going to probably take Valorous Audacity and see how that works. And we're also going to take Strength because that's going to give us two points instead of the measly one that we otherwise would have gotten. And there we have it. Okay, fantastic. We've just completed a mission and now we just need to report back to the Emissary. But you know what we're actually going to do instead? We're going to rest. Let's go and rest. We're just going to go for a little bit of a camp here. And we are going to use the campfire to uh, cook some food here. So as you can see, we've got some... Oh, hilariously enough, we have some bread. Isn't that amazing? Okay, so let's just do that. There we go. Um, can I actually overfeed them? I'm actually not entirely sure what overfeeding does. What, what does overfeeding do? It doesn't seem to do much. So I don't seem to need to worry about that. And uh, uh, yeah, okay. Unfortunately, we don't have any coal or wood at the moment. Which is sad, because I think I could have probably increased their happiness level by uh, cooking with coal. Or maybe not. No, no, no. Their happiness is already is already good. Yeah, as you can see, your troops' happiness increases by four. And our troops' happiness is now seven, which is great. You've gained the following bonus. Maximum valor points increased by one. So there we go. We now have the ability to utilize six maximum valor points. We currently have two, because we've just rested. And that is wonderful. Now we are back up to full speed and now we can depart away from our camp once again and then we can just pick up, well, continue to pick up some resources in the area here too. Very nice. And let me just take a quick look at the map. Okay, so this guy's over here. Not sure. Hmm. Do I want to go there first or do I want to explore the Sinister Cave? Okay, I think I'm probably going to explore the Sinister Cave first because I think that other task is a little bit further away than what I think. So it might be... Um, you know, it might be a little bit out of our out of our um, area of activity, shall we say. Because we want to obviously go back to the town. Alright, so there's Bertram here. Everth. And Helalet. Okay, uh, let's speak to Bertram then, I suppose. Ah, mercenaries. Did Fergus send you to help us? He didn't? Damn it. What? Wait, wait. Would you be willing to help us if we make it worth your while? You probably saw a campsite on your way here. That's Captain Rovand and his men. If you kill him, you will do much more than save our lives. Without Captain Rovand to defend them, the good people of Tiltron would surely share their resources with us refugees. We wouldn't have to steal or threaten them anymore. Kill him for us. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. They are stealing and threatening the good people of Tiltron, he said. All right, sure, I'll, I'll do this for you, sir. <laughs> okay, that's that, okay. That's a little, that's a little bit harsh. That's a little bit harsh that he's uh, he's threatening the good people of Tiltron, shall we say? All right, let's go and uh, go into the camp here and speak to Mister Rovand and see what he has to say. Bertram hired you to kill us? No, wait. You don't understand. This man is not some poor refugee. He's been terrorizing the local farmers and stealing their crops. He must die. I will pay you to kill him. Ooh, see now this is. This is exactly my point about RPGs. I love it when RPGs do this kind of thing. It's it's not, I, I don't know, it's done a lot more often nowadays, but I personally feel like it needs to be done more. I need more of this, and that's exactly what War Tales is doing with this particular, you know, early game quest. Obviously, this is very early on, and it's a decision that the player has to take morally, who knows what's the right decision? We don't know. But it seems as though if, if they're... I mean, Bertram himself said that he's been stealing stuff and threatening people and everything. So I'm going to assume that he is indeed doing what Captain Rovan says. But just imagine, what if they concealed their motives just that little bit more and then the player decides to, you know, mistakenly you know, side with someone that they don't mean to. You know what I mean? And it just... It gives you that overall feeling of dynamicism and, and trepidation. And you're just kind of like, oh, what do I do? Do I do this? Do I do that? I'm not entirely sure. But I am going to accept that we go and kill Bertram. Because he uh, he himself said that he's threatening people. So why not? Let's, uh, let's deal with him. 
Reuven tired you to kill me. I beg of you, don't do this. We do not enjoy bullying the farmers, you know. We have no choice if we want to survive. Rovand is the one who must die. I will match his offer. In fact, I can pay you more, and you will be doing a good deed. Once he is gone, the farmers of Tiltron will have no one to protect them. We won't have to force them to share their resources with us. Kill the captain. It's the only solution. Well, uh, that's the funny thing about this. He, he literally says, the farmers will have no one to protect them. He obviously just wants to continue his, you know, his uh, tirade, his, his uh, you know, reign of tyranny, shall we say. Anyway, yeah, we're just going to attack Bertram. He's the ringleader, as you can see right there. And we're just going to take him down. And uh, hopefully we'll not step on a bear trap this time around. Because stepping on a bear trap was certainly not something that I anticipated doing. Okay, so there's Glory all the way over there. Not a big fan of Glory being there. So we're probably just going to do the good old-fashioned thing and just move them over here. And there we go. All right. So let's... Uh, we can't actually fire right now. So let's actually just move up a little bit. Just fire real fast. There we go. That's some nice damage. And I'm actually wondering whether we should just take Wonky straight on in. I think that's probably what we'll do. Just take Wonky straight on in, get them engaged in combat. And maybe we even want to use Taunt. I think I think we might as well use Taunt. Let's do that because that's going to weaken Bertram quite significantly. And then we're going to be able to pretty much do, do whatever, you know. And uh, then he's going to do very little damage. Oh, look at the amount of damage we're dealing here. Wow, that's some significant pain that he's taking. Very nice. Okay, so now we can just go over here. Hopefully this is going to be enough range. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm, that is nice. All right, fantastic. We were able to achieve victory, and look at what we've gained. Look at this. A wonderful ringleader's dagger, and it actually provides us with a unique skill, the Devious Whirlwind skill. Um, that actually reminds me, uh, he also had a lockpick as well. That actually reminds me that I did not equip Wonky with the new shield. There you go. That's obviously going to help a, a massive amount. I mean, literally, look at that. Guard plus 12, armor plus 6. I mean, really, that is just absolutely incredible for such an early game shield. Okay, so that's going to be super nice. Not sure who should use the dagger, though. That's the question. And uh, you can see here, if this, if this attack hits several units, it creates a cloud of poison. And the cloud of poison applies two to any unit that walks through the cloud or ends their turn within it. And as you can see, poison makes them lose 5% of their max HP. So it's actually really nice. Not sure who can use that, though. As I've said before, I have no idea. Anyway, uh, let's move over here to Marvin. He obviously leveled up. Let's give him some constitution. And he also can probably take Valorous Audacity. I think that seems pretty decent. And we can now move on. There we have it. Oh, yes. Also, this is something that I have not touched upon yet. But there is an additional skill tree, shall we say, it's not really a skill tree, so to speak, but it is a thing that allows you to provide your party with additional benefits. So, for example, let's say that I want to reduce my, um, I don't know, my food consumption. So you can see here, this is probably what would have been good for me to take before I rest it. Because, as you can see, the troop eats three less food. So they don't need, um, I think it's 18 food usually, right? Uh, with this particular start. Um but yeah, we're just going to learn that. There you go. We're just going to learn that. And that means the troop eats less food, which is great. Um, you can also do other things like you can run for short periods of time. Uh, wages paid to companions is reduced by 10%. You can spend influence to add one to an aptitude when leveling up, which is actually really, really powerful for early game. So it's probably a good idea to take that. And boom, I'm going to actually do that. So you can spend influence. I only have 58 influence right now, so I'm probably not going to be... Um, you know, using it for uh, an additional aptitude. But imagine you can do that. So early on, you're going to literally make your characters into absolute beasts, or at least you're going to try to obviously do that. And then, of course, you have the workshop here, which is kind of like your crafting system. So, for example, if you have iron ore, you can create some lockpicks out of that. If you have iron ore, you can create some fish hooks. And I think I might actually like to do that, to be honest. How can I actually do this? I actually have no idea how to use the crafting system. I think I probably have to go to the, the smithy or something like that in the town. And it's it's actually really good that we already did that. Wait a minute. Do I need to go to the guard post to actually speak to um to speak to Rovant? No, no, he's already he's gone. So we obviously completed the task to 
eliminate Bertrand. Okay, um, so uh, we should probably make our way back to the town. I'm thinking we'll probably go back to the... No, wait a minute. We can't go back to the town just yet, can we? No, we need to do this task. We need to do this task. So I'm actually going to make my way over there. And in the meantime, I should probably show you the map, shouldn't I? Well, unfortunately, of course, there is a fog of war, so to speak. But if you take a look at the various edges of the map here, you can see that it literally is massive. And this is just one area. You can see here, you know, locations discovered, so on and so forth. Each region has its own scenario, and you can follow its progress here. And as I said before, they just added a new endgame region. So again, they've expanded the game so significantly, and there are so many different regions that you're going to be able to explore. Okay, anyway. Um, yeah, let's just pick up that wood and I need to go over in this direction. I hope I'm actually going the right way because I'm a little bit worried that I'm going to get ambushed or something. Let me just see here. Yeah, this is the right way. We go just straight forward. We should be absolutely fine. And um, yeah, we have troops and bonuses. Oh, look, look, there's actually a boar over there and you can see its line of sight and everything. So that's very cool. And we've got some more resources over here as well. And we have suspicion too. Yeah, so obviously, if you want to, you can basically be anything you want. You can be anything you want whatsoever. That's the wonder of this game. Because what you can do, as you can see from this screen, you can do anything. You can be a bounty hunter. You can be a blacksmith. You can be a scoundrel, a criminal of some kind. You can even be an explorer if you so desire. As you can see, discover five locations. It's going to give you some points and everything. And then you're going to be able to spend those in whatever you want. So there's a wide variety of things you can do. As I said before, you can also train your people in professions. So for example, you can train your people in things like thievery or angling if you wanted to do some fishing and a variety of others as well. And each one is obviously going to gain significant benefits from doing that. Maybe they're going to be able to uh, gain some dexterity or something along those lines. I, ha I have no idea about that, so don't quote me on it. But as far as I can tell, the professions kind of go hand in hand with who your characters are and they grow alongside them. And it's so, so nice. It really is. Anyway, let's have a look here. Please untie me. La Hart's goons could be here any minute. They want to take me back to Edoran. I am no danger to anyone. They are after me because I desert it. You can't imagine what they do to artisans like me and Arthas. Count La Hart treats us worse than slaves. Okay, well, it requires a lockpick. I do have a lockpick, so why not? Let's release him. And we can select a thief. Okay, yeah, so this is exactly what I was talking about. I think I'm probably going to make Glory a thief. So we can now select that, as you can see. And this actually provides him, as I said before, with a stat benefit. So there you go. I was actually correct in thinking that. I, I, I seem to recall that I, I did already find that out beforehand. Anyway, yeah. So he's going to gain Dexterity 1 for being a thief. So we're going to select him. And he's going to do the little lock picking. Oh, no. I have to do it myself. Oh, yeah. As I say, it's been a while since I've actually done anything like... Oh, no. This is bad. Wait a minute. How do I do this? Nope. Nope. Ah, oh, you... Okay. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Uh, let's, uh, let's just, let's just not, not even... Uh, let's just not even assume that that happened. Let's just not even assume that that happened, okay? Because uh, that's the thing. If I had more, it always happens to me, okay? Confession time. Whenever there is a lockpicking system in a game, I always break the first one, okay? I always break the first one. No matter what happens, the first one is always a um, always a, a sure gone way of me, me just literally breaking it. Because uh, I need to learn, you know? I need to learn the system. And that's, uh, that's exactly what happened there. All right, well, we're going to do battle with a boar, apparently. Because apparently that's uh, that's what the boar wants to do. The boar wants to fight us. Which, i got to say, I'm not a big fan of. I'm not a big fan of that. But, you know, that's absolutely fine. If the boar wants to fight, then the boar wants to fight. 73% chance. Let's not shoot. Okay. Yeah, that's another thing that you've got to be uh, very aware of. If you shoot your own troops, their relation is going to go down with each other. 
So yeah, that's something to be very aware of. And I think that's actually a very cool system, all things considered, because you're, you're obvi I mean, obviously that's going to happen. You know, if you hit your own person, they're not going to be best pleased about that, are they? They're not going to be very pleased at all. So yeah, there's also that. Anyway, we've got a carcass here. We've got pristine fangs and so on and so forth. Just going to loot all of that. And we might as well repair Wonky as well. But we're going to be specking into some strength here with them. And oh, look at this. We actually have a specialization to go for here. So we can now go for Vanguard, Smasher, or Destroyer. In my opinion, Destroyer seems like the most powerful one, at least for reducing damage taken. So you can see here, deals six to seven damage to the target and applies weakening for three rounds. In my opinion, that is actually kind of insane. So I'm probably going to be taking Destroyer. But bear in mind, this ability does use Valor Points. And Valor Points are, of course, finite. So that's, you know, again, something to just keep in mind. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Okay, so we need to go along here. Uh, I keep pressing W because I want to move the camera with WSD. But no, that's not, that's not how it works. Okay, so... Let me see. What? Where do I actually need to go? Who, who are these guys? These are bandits, 100%. What do you bet? I, I'm betting these are bandits right here. Oh, they're actually attacking. Are you serious that they're attacking? Come on. You are not good. You are not going to do this. Oh, this is actually the quest. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Oh, fine. Fine. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely the quest. Let's 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 take them down. Let's see what we can do. And there's only one of them, obviously, so this is not going to be too bad. But now we can actually use Weakening Blow. So that's going to be super fun, isn't it? Okay, so I'm actually going to use Weakening Blow. Can I Can I do that? Yep, seems like it. Boom, nice. Like it. And the Weakening is going to make a huge difference as well. Okay, so Glory is obviously going to be firing. 100% chance. Come on, let's get a critical. Ah, no. Only a 6% chance, right? Only a 6% chance, so highly unlikely we would get a critical, but you never know. Maybe you're going to get gonna get lucky or something like that. Oh, that was a nice critical. Thank you very much, Marvin. Good work. Very nice work. And we've got a jacket. Look at that. we got a jacket. Wonderful. Okay, that's nice. Oh, so that jacket's going to be very useful. Oh, wait a minute. Please, have mercy, good sirs. Have mercy on us. We didn't attack you to hurt you, believe me. We only wanted to scare you so that you would hand over your crowns. Please don't hurt me. It was wrong and we knew it. But Gozenberg requires so much gold to cross the border that we had no other choice. We have no other choice but to rob travelers. Okay, so we can execute. <laughs> we can execute if we want to get some cloth. Or we can give 250 gold, but we do get a raider's bow. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm thinking we're going to just give the money to cross the border because I personally am going to get quite a lot of money for completion of this task and I wouldn't mind getting the Raider's Bow for Wonky. I mean, for Glory, even. I get, I'm getting mixed up with my own people now. You, you offer us passage? I can't believe it. Thank you ever so much. Please, take this. We no longer need it. Well, yeah, you no longer need it because you're not a raider anymore, you absolute scoundrel. All right. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, now we can actually equip this bow. And you can see here that it actually provides us with a unique skill, the vicious, vicious shot skill. And that provides the ability to knock enemies back by two meters. So that can be very useful to create separation. Very nice indeed. So Wonky can actually use the dagger potentially. Can he? No. Okay. No. Wonky can't use that. Okay, well, um, maybe we should give this. Is that is that better? Yeah, I think that is actually better. Yeah, that is much better. So the new jacket for, for, for Wonky right there. Very nice indeed. All right, so I'm going to make my way back to the town. Actually, you know what? We're going to rest first because we're running out of fatigue right here. Probably a good idea to do this. The carcass, we're just going to cook that. And we have some wood this time around as well. So we can actually gain wood, as you can see right there. So that's really nice. Well, gain happiness with wood. So that's nice. There we go. Let's do that. And everyone's going to be very, very happy to be fed and everything. And wonderful. Look at that. And we're gaining back our Valor Points as well. So it's really a very good idea to do as much as you can in regards to gaining your Valor Points and utilizing them well in combat. Okay, so a small makeshift workshop. This could actually be really useful as well. I'm going to make Wonky our Tinkerer, I think. 
I think that sounds like a decent idea. Oh, no, actually, wait a minute. Tinkerer gives critical hit chance. Hmm. Wonky's not really a critical hit person. What about Marvin? Marvin is kind of a critical hit person. So let's do the critical hit for him. There we go. So he's going to be... So yeah, this is how you can craft things. Okay, so this is good. So that menu beforehand was not the crafting menu. This is the crafting menu. So this is very cool. Let's create a fish hook. There we go. And let's create some lock picks. Boom. There we go. Okay, that's wonderful. And we can also create other things as well. Like, for example, torches, tents, and all, all that wonderful stuff. But you're going to need resources to be able to do all that. So, unfortunately, I don't have that stuff. And uh, actually, you know what? Um, where's that tower? There's the tower. Okay, so wait a minute. Where is the tower again? Is It's back up here, right? Yeah, this is the, this is the right way. So, now that I have lockpicks, I would love to be able to free that guy that we were unable to before. Because, of course, I was, you know, an imbecile in regards to the lockpicking system. But uh, hopefully I will have a much better idea as to how to do it this time around. So let me go up here and uh, wish me luck, eh? Wish me luck. Wait a minute, is there actually a, uh, do I have, oh, I have another knowledge point. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe there is a way for me to get better at, oh uh, no, there isn't. No, there isn't a, oh uh, no, there isn't a better way for, for me to, um, <laughs> uh, get better at lockpicking or anything like that. Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so I think what I'm probably going to do is take run. This seems pretty fun because now I'm going to be able to run, as you can see right here, with the little energy meter, and that allows me to go faster on the world map. So that's really nice. Anyway, let's uh, speak to this guy once again, and we're going to release him. Glory is obviously going to do this. Oh, no. Oh! Oh, that was so easy. I did it. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, that was very surprising. I, pff, I have no idea. Okay. So now let's see. Thank you. I'll work for anyone except Count Lahart. I'm an excellent craftsman, you know. I can do wonders. Take me with you and lead me to my future boss. I may not have the gold to pay you, but times like these, I imagine he'll pay handsomely for a man of my talent. All right. So we can actually escort him now. And he is now following us. Okay. So then we can obviously make our way back to the town. Having a deserter in your troop could draw... Oh, no. Could draw unwanted attention from Lahart's men. Okay, well, that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. But that is uh, that is for me to deal with, isn't it? Yes, that is for me to deal with. And, oh, no. There they come. Mercenaries, this man belongs to Count Lahart. Hand him over without resisting. Okay, so, wait a minute. Is this guy actually really hard? I'm going to fight. He's a legionary. He's level one. Okay, let's fight him. Let's see what happens because this is oh, this is obviously very dynamic because, of course, you could just hand the guy over. That's the thing. You could just hand the guy over if you wanted to. But I think it's more fun to fight. Okay, so he's... Oh, he's looking, he's looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good right now. There's a bear trap right here. Where's Glory? Oh, Glory's all the way over there. You imbecile. Why are you over there? All right, so, yeah, we're... <laughs> oh dear, maybe this is not going to go well. Well, let's just try our very best. We've just rested, so we've got full HP, where where we've got some Valor points, so we can utilize our, all of our skills and everything. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get right up, in, right up into this guy's business, and we're going to do Weakening Blow against him, so that he does less damage. And then, can we actually hit him as well? <gasps> you can attack twice? Oh, I actually had no idea that you could do that. Okay, that's good to know. That is good to know. Okay, yeah. So that's something that I obviously made a bit of a mistake about beforehand. But that's fine because we now know. You know, we learned about it. And we can actually use Vicious Shot here as well. 80% chance. Don't know whether that's going to be good enough. Let's try it. Oh, it worked. Oh, that was some damage. That was some damage. Okay, that was real nice. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello. What? What? You could stop attacking Glory now. Thank you very much. That was way too much damage. Wow, that was really impressive, actually, surprisingly enough. All right, well, let's do some damage here. Maybe a nice critical. No, nope, no critical, unfortunately. That was literally... Okay, this guy was weakened as well, so he did 50% less damage. I would have assumed that actually Glory probably would have died. I'm going to assume that. I'm going to assume that that would have been an absolute death on our hands right there. So we're going to have to use first aid in a second, I assume. Nice kill. The leader has been murdered. 
Galvanization. And bread has unlocked the trait Glorious as well. All right, very nice. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to move any further here. So we're just going to have to... What does Galvanization do? Damage increased by 50%. Oh, that's nice. Okay, this guy's engaging. Uh, a bit weird. A bit weird to just engage the tank. But if he wants to do that, then that's, that's what he wants to do. All right, so let's move behind... Gonna just push him. Nice. A little bit of extra damage being done there as well. And Wonky can, of course, now uh, maybe do some damage. Try to engage him for our second Spearman Marvin to get over there. So let's do that. There we go. Yes. And then Glory can... Uh, actually, not entirely sure what to do with Glory, to be honest with you. I mean, we can just move move them and 100% uh, chance. Nice. That's decent-ish, isn't it? And then we can obviously heal ourselves if we want to. It actually heals a dying ally for 10% of their max health. I'm not sure if this actually works as I think. I think it does, but I'm not going to heal right now. I don't see a point in that. Because we can just rest afterwards and then it's going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so let's go for the kill. 100% chance. Boom. There we go. And we did gain one of those yellow Valor points, so technically we could have used that in the next turn if we wanted to. Oh, look at that. The Flurry of Blows skill. This is amazing for Wonky. Oh, yes. That sounds hilarious when I say it like that. All right, so let's just use our raw materials to repair everyone. We've got 116 influence. We're doing massively well right here. Okay, so can I actually equip this? I can't. Okay, wait a minute. It's not, not for Wonky. Wait a minute. It's a polearm, isn't it? So Marvin's obviously going to be good for this. Yeah, look at that. And now he has Flurry of Blow, so it deals three damage to the target four times. He is literally going to murder every single person that he comes across. Anyway, that is actually going to be it for this episode. I'm going to head back to the town, and we're obviously going to hand that in. Uh, hand in all those tasks and we're, we're probably going to be looking pretty good in, in terms of our wages and our influence and everything and we can actually then go to the informant and we'll be able to purchase some information and then continue on with the various other quests and tasks that we have or we can do some more for the for the mercenaries guild as well who knows anyway if you'd like to check out war tales it's out now from early access full version available through the link in the description you really got to give it a go if you like open world RPGs and tactical turn-based combat. You really do. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.